Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be having a look at the new radio from FlySky, this is the FSST16. I reviewed the ST8 a couple of years ago uh, and it's a mid-range radio based on the ANT protocol and here's the FSST16 which is an upgrade of the ST8 also on the ANT protocol. It's a big upgrade to the ST8 with lots more inputs uh, lots more mixes and programmability and configurability as well. The SD8 is a great beginner radio, very easy to uh, set up a model, very easy to use, good specs, good range and all that sort of stuff. And the ST16 is a serious advanced radio, catering to all types of RC models from planes, quads, uh, tracked vehicles, robots, cars, ships. Uh, just about anything you can imagine. Now these ant based radios uh, from FlySky, they're probably easier to use than the Edge TX radios from things like Radio Master and Jumper with lots of pre-configured mixes and uh, specific model setups for things like gliders and uh, V-tails and things like that. Much easier to program these up than with Edge TX so uh, if you're not into those sort of uh, open source uh, complex but powerful radios then this is uh, probably a good idea to have a look at. Just have a quick look at the specs on the box here. Model number FSST 16, 16 channels compatible with every different sort of RC model. 2.4 GHz ISM AMP protocol battery 18650 two pieces or 2S LiPo. Input power 6 to 9 volts. Uh, dimensions weight 665 grams and and there are all the CE and FCC IDs for certification. Now it comes with this fairly good uh, EPP carry case with a lock and a handle and everything. Fits in there very securely. There's a quick start guide there. Comes with the FS SR8 receiver pre-bound to the model in the radio. Uh, USB-C charging and data cable there. Some gimbal stick protectors, there's an alternate spring for the throttle, there's a battery voltage detection cable because all of these receivers can read your pack voltage and give you telemetry back to the radio, and a little bit of rubber stuff probably to stop the battery uh, wobbling around, and a QC certificate there. First thing you'll notice is that it has a nice big, what is it, 3.5 inch screen that is 320 by 480 pixels IPS display. I turn it on and you can see that it is a very nice big colourful screen. Configurable LEDs in the buttons and the gimbal surrounds there. And we have one two position. 3 position, 3 position, 2 position, couple of variable resistors, uh, self-centering dials on the shoulders there, 2 position, 2 position there. Uh, we have an antenna that lifts up and rotates around and we have an alternate antenna hole there that you can connect another, maybe a long range antenna inside. USB-C and uh, 3.5 earphone plug there. On the back we also have four momentary keys there, which are very useful. They just sort of suit your fingers very nicely. You've got this nice alloy handle there. Battery. It is two 18650s and there's a, a battery holder in there, which can be removed too. You just undo, undo a couple of screws and you can pull that out. Maybe use a, a, a loose 2S LiPo if you want to. In radio charging, balanced charging, four trim switches and we have a mobile phone holder bracket there as well, as well as the lanyard bracket. And these six buttons along here, that's not a six position switch, they are six uh, shortcut switches to menu items. We'll show you that when you go through the menu a bit more. But it has a nice feel, nice rounded and, and easy to grip with a sort of a textured uh, rubbery surface to it. It all feels very nice uh, and secure in your hands. 
So if you go over to the FlySky website, uh, you can see the ANT protocol is kind of the mid-range protocol. We've got the old original AFHDS and AFHDS 2A. Then there's the uh, AFHDS 3 with the Paladins. Uh, and the ANT protocol on the FSST8. The FSST16 isn't even showing on the website yet, so very early days. Now the ANT protocol radios aren't compatible by themselves with the AFHDS3 and the AFHDS2A protocols, but uh, there are external modules that you can fit. You won't be able to use external modules until the firmware is updated to support them, which should be coming soon, according to FlySky. On the receiver side, there are lots and lots of receivers available for, for every protocol, so there's no drama there. And uh, we're using the FS... SR8 8 channel receiver with IBUS and SBUS and PPM available as well, as well as PWM. And a bit more information on the ANT protocol, automatic frequency hopping digital system, that's what AFHDS means. And it's based on the AFHDS 2A system, but not compatible with it, unfortunately. Advantages of the ANT system, bi-directional, so you, you get telemetry coming back from the receiver to the radio. Automatic frequency hopping, as most of these protocols are. Uh, independent ID recognition, so individual models have their own uh, ID sort of system on the receiver, so you can't mix them up. Lower power consumption too. They're saying that the power consumption is as low as one-sixth of the FM version. Now let's have a look at the menu uh, and the home screen. We have, uh, what I'll do actually is plug the receiver in and we'll see some telemetry show up here so there you can see the receiver voltage is shown up the rssi or signal strength receiver battery level shows up here as well we've got rssi here and we've got another slot for some telemetry if you want to add some model number and i've called it the bixler 2 condition so these are like flight modes uh, which i've set up i've set up three different flight modes and these icons along here that light up when you select particular things that's uh, idle there abs braking throttle cut and we have mix and haptic vibration there all of these home screen items can be directly edited uh, that's the timer we've got a couple of timers there and the telemetry, all the different sensors that are connected show up here and you can put them on the home screen if you want to, set them up, set up alarms, all that sort of stuff. Lots of sensors available from FlySky. Um, all the IBUS sensors will work with this receiver and transmitter. And model setup, you can get into that there. So that's all directly from the home screen. We also have two home screens. If we push the exit button, we can go to the second home screen and I've got it set as the channel monitor. And you can display all channels or 1 to 8, 9 to 16, and you can do a channel test as well. Now we'll go into the menu and basic menu. This is where we, we can get to the channel monitor that way as well. We set up the model, select the model. We have uh, 40 model slots uh, and I uh, have three set up at the moment, the Bixler 2, a glider and INF. When you se select different model types, you get different mixes available or different pre-mixes available to you. But there are 40 model slots there. And we can reverse channels here. Servo rote is the channel outputs. So you can set uh, endpoints and midpoint, the channels. Uh, delay times. You can set delays for channels, like, for example, putting gear down. If you want it to come down slowly rather than slamming down, then you can set those sorts of delays in this screen here. Function assign. This is where you select different controls for different channels, and you can give them a, a, a function name as well. All the way down, there should be 16 here. There we go. And trims as well. You're setting up the trims, you can set up trim steps, how many steps you want for each click and uh, which uh, flight mode you want them to apply to. Setting up the timers, I have a couple of timers, let's have a look at them. So I have a, uh, a throttle on timer and a armed timer as well. And they're both triggered by the, a logical switch which includes 
the arming switch and the throttle. I've got one counting up and I've got one counting down from five minutes with an alarm at the end of it. So pretty powerful switch setups. So logical switch, uh, I've got and for the, the throttle and the arming switch. They both have to be on for the timers to start and I can reset them using the buttons on the back. That's again something you can set up. And we can set up trainer mode, stick mode. You can change between whatever modes you want. Switch settings, two position, three position. The switches are very, very uh, configurable. And quick set, so that is these uh, six buttons along here. You can set where they take you when you push those buttons, uh, or the different menu items. So I've got the, the first button is the uh, channel monitor and also other things are set there as well. So they're really just uh, menu shortcuts uh, accessed by these buttons here. Now the model menu, channel monitor again, then we've got the conditions which are different flight modes. You can just uh, add up to five different flight modes and you can see I've got normal launch and acro assigned to the SC switch here. Function rate, here we can set rates and expo and uh, dual rates for each of those different flight modes that I've set up. You can see normal I've got 60% uh, rate and no expo. Launch I've got 70% rate and 30% expo and acro I've just got 100% rate. Here's a specific dual rate setup page. You've got 10 uh, individual dual rate function setups. So I haven't really investigated, investigated that yet, but you can see these are the flight modes that I set up before. You can apply different dual rates to different flight modes uh, with another switch. Channel offset, pro mixes. These are free mixes and you have up to 20 free mixes where you can do whatever mixing you want. Throttle curve. Logical switches, this is where I set up the logical switch to start the timers. Throttle hold, idle up, throttle cut, a lot of internal combustion related functions here. And a couple of mixes depending on what model type I set up. So an aileron mixes, preset aileron mixes, aileron to elevator and aileron, aileron to rudder and uh, rudder mixes as well. If you went to the glider, we would get uh, extra mixes in there. I'll show you that in a minute. Receiver menu, there's the bind setup. Uh, at the moment, we only have two ways of binding, routine and fast. Uh, I would have to disconnect my receiver to be able to get access to them. Eventually, when the firmware catches up with it, we'll also get external RF module binding here as well. It's just not available at the moment. Uh, and can be two-way or one-way, so that's basically with telemetry or without telemetry. Output mode, you can put the receiver into S-Bus, I-Bus, PPM, uh, and PWM modes. Frequency and bind. Fail-safe, sensor setup. If you look on the FlySky website, you can see all the I-Bus sensors that are available for this system. Uh, and we also have a GPS setting screen, uh, display screen as well. And iBus setting, that's for uh, adding uh, an extension receiver with an iBus connection to give you more channels. And finally, system menu. This is where we set up the radio settings, setup, languages, battery type, brightness of all the LEDs, uh, arms, delays, sound, and all that sort of stuff. Here's the second home screen. You can choose all these different things for the second home screen. Change the colors of the lights, put the sound on if you want to. Um, I find the sound a bit, a bit annoying usually, so I usually turn that off. Vibration alarm and units. And then we've got stick calibration, uh, sort of startup, self-check. Uh, firmware update and reset help center and about so there we go that is uh, a very powerful very configurable radio with lots of mixes and lots of premixes oh that's what i was going to show you let's show you some of the extra glider mixes i choose the glider and the model menu and now we have more mixes more premixes available we've got flaps elevator butterfly and air brake. And I'll show you the butterfly in the model menu. 
uh, that's on this one here. You can see Butterfly gives us flaps going slowly down, Alon's going up and Elevator compensating as well. And these are all sort of pre-mixes that you can easily adjust as well. So very easy to set up complex mixes with this radio. All right, so I'm going to take the ST16 out for a fly with my Bixlet 2. Uh, hopefully get some transmitter cam if I can. Feels good so far. There we go. Hard to get the camera pointing towards the transmitter, but that should be right. So it's bright sunshine and I've got my sunglasses on and I had to turn the brightness up to 100% to be able to see it on the screen. I can see stuff, I can see the timer, uh, I can't see the little telemetry screens, but uh, feels just like a normal radio. It's not heavy. Uh, the rubber sort of covering feels uh, nice and secure. Gimbals feel very light, very smooth. Not sure what sort of gimbals they are, but they feel very, very light. And switches, it's a little bit of a stretch to get to the switches. It's a, kind of a biggish radio, I guess, but it has a nice rounded feel to it. Yeah, just a nice, normal radio with lots of mixing possibilities, lots of fly sky sensors can be attached to it. Can output S bus and I bus for flight control boards, so it's a very well featured transmitter really. Whee. Very easy to use, just feels pretty natural in my hands. I'm not using a lanyard. I normally would use a lanyard, but uh, I didn't use one so that we could see the screen when I'm flying. Um, but yeah, feels very nice. Lovely radio. So there you go, the Flysky ST. 16. It's zero, zero. I can't actually see the screen in this sun. Uh, I don't know if you can on the camera, but it's not too bad. No, I didn't even pull up the antenna, which is what I should have done for better range, but uh, no problems with range so far. Very nice, serious, advanced radio from Fly Sky, I would say. Uh, somewhere between the very expensive Spectrum radios and easier to program up and to uh, get started with than the uh, open TX based radios or edge TX based radios so hmm, yeah a good mid-range option okay that'll do it for this one thanks for watching see you in the next video